Hi everyone, good day, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining us from. You're welcome to your number one show, The Nigeria We Want. Joining me today is Mr. Wally Olighton. That is our intercontinental moderator. You are welcome to the show once again, Mr. Wally Olighton. Uh, Dr. Vicky Mifolaji, is good to be back. Our international uh, <laughs> entrepreneur. <laughs> Uh, multifaceted uh, uh, content creator, business, and so yeah, it's good to be back on our our number one show, the mm. Nigeria we want. Mm. So today we have a we have a topic uh, that we would like to actually go in depth on. Um, our two panelists, Egbo Yemi, Mr. Yemi Shodimo. He's still current. We're not sure whether he's, he's on his way back to Nigeria or if he's still in the UK. He will join us if he can make it. And Mr. Elvis Nwachuku, the struggle continues regarding um, being able to access internet and um, and all that kind of stuff. So it's likely going to be just you and I and our viewers that will be making today's show work. So we'll see how we go. But it's a, it's a topic that, that is quite important, um, uh, you know, which is all about asset declaration or division of, division of assets by couples in marriages or if they're exiting the marriage. So we're going to be talking in depth about that. And we know what brought that on, what made us to want to talk about it is the recent incident regarding the footballer who, who put everything that he owned under his mom. It does it had nothing to his name. So men, so many people were saying, well done, you've done a good job there. Men were saying you won a battle for us, you know. Um I was just in a in a get together at a get together, and that was one of the topics that we just you know when you're having fun, you talk about yeah. stuff. That was one of the topics that we we doubled into, and I'm like, if marriages, if that's the way we see marriages these days, then it's quite concerning, concerning for young people coming behind us. Um, but. We are going to talk about it, and the floor is open for our viewers that may want to come on board, even be with us in the studio. We will let you in. You come on in and, um, you know, join your voice with ours so that we can, we can, we can preach what is right. I mean, you and I, we've been, you know, if we look at how many years, combined years we have, uh, you know, in marriage, it's 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 more than it's more than it's get, getting close to 60 years just you and i um the, those experiences that we've gained along the way it's not for it's it's not just there for nothing so we are gonna actually delve into this but before we go into it um i'll pass it on to you for us to do uh the first part of um show which is about what is trending and i really don't have much myself so <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I i think i don't really have much in terms of what is trending to be honest mm. i've not really i've had a busy week and you know yeah. and that means that i haven't really paid much attention to um relevant uh, stories political yeah. stories or socioeconomic stories Mm. Same here with me. Same, it's yeah. been crazily busy. Yeah. yeah. So I think we we can just link. But I, I remember one just now. I remember okay. one. Um, blessing CEO. She's self-acclaimed relationship expert. Self-acclaimed okay. relationship expert or relationship coach uh, in Nigeria that. Um, you know, encourages or motivates married women, young women um, to, you know, how to, there are times she speaks, you know, she says good things, but most of the times it can be, yeah, not so good. 
But I guess she she got into trouble for talking too much, not just for talking too much, for saying things that she wasn't supposed to say. Um, remember the case of a young woman, a mother of five that um, died or passed away. I think it was December, November or December last year. Um, can't remember the name now, but she, this woman passed away. There were, there were allegations against the husband that it was the husband that um, abused her physically and she eventually gave up the ghost through yeah. all the beatings over the years. Remember that case? Yeah, I remember, I remember, but not the clear details. Uh, yes. But I, I have a bit of sketchy idea of, of mm. that. Story. So what happened was Blessing CEO sided the man against the woman who passed and actually bullied the sisters, the, the ladies, the woman that passed, the sister. She and everything was, of course, you can all these things that we're saying here, we've got to be careful because it can be used against us. It's a yeah, yeah, I, 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 absolutely, and if it's yeah. really, mm. I just try as much as possible. Uh, areas that are very against allegations and counts allegations, yeah, it's a very uh. It's a very delicate area. Delicate, yes. It's a very, it's a very well, delicate Unfortunately, she, she, she just, because Nigeria can be lawless. But of course, when, when, when some people started complaining or something like that, she had to, they, they, they actually, she was in prison or in jail for, for weeks, even if not up to a month. Probably she's just been released. Okay. We're not very sure, but even the conditions of her release, it's so high, you know, she had to provide two people to, 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 they, they call them shorty or something like that. Yeah, shorty or guarantor. Yeah. Kind of guarantor. guarantor. <clears throat> and they've got to have certain millions of Naira in their account. They've got to release their passport, uh, their international passport. They've got to, you know, they've got to have a land in, not just a land in Elisha or in Abe Okuta. The land must be in Ikoyi or VI in one of those places. Two of them, you know, the they, 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 they two, just too much. Why they did that, I don't know. But I think it's just to serve as a lesson for all those bloggers saying nonsense sometimes and just you know sharing information that are untrue unfounded information information that can actually destroy um absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. then the other the other one it's not relating to nigeria but we need to still talk about it robert mudok okay the bill on here the australian bill on here. Fox News owner. He was found. No, no, no. They they, they settled out of court. This look at the other issue. They settled out. So of court. Yeah. he had to pay one point seven billion dollars to um, the the software company Dominion. Are they called Dominion in America um, for? spreading the news that the the, the dominion uh, software was was um, compromised was uh, the the results election results were lies and all that kind of stuff uh, things like this had to be done because the 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 truth are getting polluted as soon as there's a there's a, there's somebody saying oh that's a lie you are creating doubt even though we can see it's, it's the truth here and there's so much of it going around all over the world. Oh, now. Absolutely. I, I so, think just to, yeah, sorry. Mm, I'm listening. Yeah, just to buttress your points around, you know, fake news, especially, you know, on, on cyberspace. Mm. Uh, I think it's just, it's a, it, it, it is a very dangerous trend. And I think some people, they just think that it is just a space that is not governed, that there's no, there's no element of governance. It's just, a free for all market where mm. you can just go there and say things uh, and you know, you know, abuse mm. people. You know, so 
is just getting ridiculous. And I think the the danger of that to democracy is that because we're talking about good governance here, about politics, about development, the the danger, in my opinion, to um, uh, politics and good governance is that the populace they get so much confused with so many fake news. Mm. And in some cases, people are making decisions, they are making political decisions based on That's things that are not really true. true. Mm. So that is, the, that is the danger of that, that the, the essence of media is to be able to provide people, to have highly informed people, so mm. that when people want to make a decision between a party A and a party B and their policies, we think they're making that based on sound judgment, based exactly. on available information to them. Mm. Where people, even the most educated people, I see them share a link. Like, you know, like there's a link that I, I'll see a, a web link without even clicking it. I can have a rough idea whether it is actually genuine or not. Oh, no, and I see please. people just share whatever link, whatever source, and they actually using that to back up whatever you know, they are spreading fake news or whatever conspiracy theory that they, that they have. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. So that is which, just is, the which is which is really sad, which is sad. And I think um, Dominion taking Modoc to court, taking him to task and, and pushing Teal, I mean, for him to have said, okay, let's just settle out of court. Because if he didn't settle out of court, if they, they they move on with it, it will cost him like up to four million four billion dollars. Wow. So he now said, okay, let's settle that of court. <laughs> so for you to have done that, that means there's there's nothing. Uh, it, is, it is it is it is a it is a soft a soft landing. Exactly. Yeah, it, it, so it is a very diplomatic soft landing. I'm, I'm happy that Dominion did that because uh, at least in some ways it's like okay we did what we have to do we did what we've been paid to do so enough is enough and yes he's paying big top dollars for this 1.7 billion dollars that's not a joke it's gonna yeah. pay that you know so it's a good thing so and i think it's a warning to all those people the bloggers and um, all those spreading fake news if if somebody pick you up and they're ready to take you to task on it, uh, you don't want to be you don't want you don't want to be on the other side. So, I think it's it's a it's a good thing at the end of the day. It's a good thing. Okay, thank uh, you very much, Doctor Doctor Vicky. Looking at mm -hmm. the time, we go straight to the main topic. We will be having a, a continuation of marriage. If you remember, two weeks ago we had very interesting conversation about marriage. And yeah. some of the issues around marriage. So, in, in continuation of that, we're looking at specifically assets declaration and sharing by couples in marriage or during divorce. And we'll be specifically looking at, uh, you know, look at the situations uh, in, in Nigeria. Um, so, to our Muslim viewers globally, where you, wherever you're working off from, the, uh, you know, happy Ramadan, uh, you know, to all our. Uh, it 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 victory or you know to all mm -hmm. uh, Muslim viewers you know globally so um yeah, so yeah. courtesy of our um, producer Mr uh, Labi I quickly you know provide intro to today's uh, topic uh, in Nigeria uh, marriage uh, is conceived uh, as a union between a man and a woman it's a serious matter but it is sadly conceived as a partnership of equals in relation to the property rights of spouses during marriage and divorce. As marriages continue to witness widespread separations, the issue of assets declaration and sharing among couples is becoming delicate and cause of even more frictions. In divorce proceedings, the most critical matters among the couples are usually the custody of children and the issue of division and settlement of properties, especially the jointly owned properties. Who well, guess what is always one of the major issues mm. brought before the court during uh, divorces 
especially among rich and celebrity couples. Uh, the general rule in the division and separation of properties, sorry, I've lost that. Oh God, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, whenever people comment on that aspect, uh, the general rule in the division and separation of properties, of properties among couples during divorces is that every property acquired by each of the couples is to be added together and split among them equally. It does not matter if one of the spouses was the sole breadwinner in the marriage, while the other spouse is a sister to, is a sit at home mother or father. This is because property purchased while the marriage subsists is presumed to be jointly brought, bought and jointly owned by the couples, hence they are to be collated and shared among them equally after divorce. Uh, but the widespread report that a Moroccan footballer with PSG of France, Ashraf Akimi, uh, who registered his assets in his mother's name, Sadia Mout, is causing a stir. Uh, this decision by the soccer star prevented the divorce-seeking wife, Iba Abuk, a Spanish Tunisian model an opportunity to get half of his assets as required by law upon separation. So we'll be asking, should couples fully disclose their assets and liabilities to each other before marriage and share the same after divorce? Yeah, sorry for that you know, glitch. Uh, I was reading from the screen and I just had a, a glitch on that screen. So, uh, Dr. Vicky, so uh, just let's go straight to, to this. Um, should couples are 50 50 when you know they go their separate ways, uh, you know, after marriage? What is your take on that? My take is that um, marriage shouldn't even be reduced to. Um, it's likely we're going to part ways. So if we part ways, I'm going to take 50% of whatever my partner has. If that's the case from the beginning, it's like you're already saying this is not going to work. And no matter what you do in that relationship, it's not going to work. Because the purpose, the, the purpose of you getting into that relationship is not hundred percent of I'm gonna give it my all, all that I have to give it to make it work. You know, it's like there's option two. So when you know there's only one option, and there's only one option, see, you have no other option but to make this option the only option that you have to work. Yes, there are some situations, okay, that you may, that you, there's nothing you can do. You just have to get out. There are some situations. But unfortunately, when you listen to some of the cases, because of the kind of work that I do, I listen to some of the stuff going on that I'm just like, come on, this is still workable. Um, there are, there are things that you can do on your own. There are things he can do. There are things you two can do together to make it work. But the the point, the, the, the point, the, the, the reason why we get into that relationship, if it had already been polluted, polluted with, yeah, it might not work. So you have option two and option three and option four. Come on, as, at, a, at a slight issue you're moving on to your option two and your option three and your option four so you have the question should there be should, should couples disclose whatever they have of course why not is one be, i mean two becoming one that's the way it should be that's the way it, you know normally that's the way it should be 
But things like this that happened with Akim and his wife and, and the others, it's just turning marriage from the institution that is supposed to be upside down. That's all about what I have, what he has, and, and I'm going to keep mine. I used to have a client. He had a Porsche. That Porsche, he hid it somewhere in one of the, the um, you know, storage so that the wife doesn't have access to it, so that the, it will not be counted as part of his assets. So during divorce and so many other, he, he put most of his money, he, he hide them into hats, you know, um, hats and stuff like that, so that the wife or the ex can't have access. So it doesn't count as part of his access. So he did all these things and he was living in one bedroom for years so that nothing goes to this wife. And I was just like, were you always planning that this was going to happen? And he said, oh, yes, nobody was going to take my money. I work out for my money. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And eventually that marriage ended. And, and, and I see, and he was telling me about other men that were doing the same thing. That's, it's, 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 it's just something that they have to do. So now this guy actually brought it out into the open for us to see it's happening. It's been happening, but it's just like this guy is actually making it more legal for, for most men that really want to do this, to go ahead and do it. Thank so, you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Vicky. Look, it is a very interesting conversation, and I think we could look at it, and that that is what I, I guess we intend to do—to look at it from both angles, you know, as objective as uh, as possible. I think one of the few things that you know, like th there are things that we make it look so universal, uh, we make it so universal in so many ways, and yeah. but marriage, you know, like everything even like religion is is embedded in a culture you know so like uh, christianity there's a, a perception is a, this perception that is all the same thing globally no. it is embedded within different cultures and, and marriage as it is and it has this universal kind of concept is still embedded within different cultures and that is why you see no one wants to come out of it looking stupid like you know the clients that you you made reference to if you have a look at whatever available statistics in the western world in terms of mm -hmm. marriage in terms of you know the longevity of marriage and everything the numbers are there they are they, they, these are statistics that are there you know on average you know uh, how many years people stay in marriage before they go their separate way so most people go into marriage as you said it should be like a lifetime contract, a lifetime commitment. Yeah. But statistics, yeah. available statistics are telling you, you know, uh, unfortunately, um, it's not like that. Like maybe if you're lucky, five, 10 years, they move their separate way. So that is why people be, begin to, I guess, make decisions, decisions that are based on economics purely, so that whatever happens, they won't lose out. Like, let's go to, you know, Ashraf Akim's case. They still having the matters before before the court, mm. you know, and then is she's straight away moved to move to the court, uh, asking for 50 50 uh, of his you know assets, hoping that obviously he's got millions of dollars in his account. So this has actually divided opinions, you know, in Nigeria, which and from what you have read, uh, with what what I've read, you can see the direction of men in favor, you know, of, of Akim for his decision, for being smart, quote and unquote. And also you can see women, you know, uh, arguing that, look, it is 50-50. Should people be, should be entitled to what, there's an argument that people should be entitled to what they are able to bring in into that marriage. In some cases that, some people part of the arrangement is that whatever they are able to achieve individually before they come to, to to come together as a couple they keep that separate and whatever they are able to achieve together during that mar marriage 
then whatever happens after that, then they can share it 50-50. If argument said, you've got two properties in your name before marriage, some people, the argument is that those two properties that you've got in your in your name, that you work for it before getting married, should be something for you. And whatever you're able to do together, we doing you know that marriage, then whatever happens. So, what 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 is your take on that, Doctor Vicky? You know, do you think that regardless of what people are bringing in or what people that it should be 50-50? Regardless of whatever you're bringing in, it should be 50-50. because, like you said before, and I actually I actually buy into the idea that it's it's not universal. Situations are different. Backgrounds are different. Cultural differences comes into play. Our religion also comes into play. So we can't, the only thing that should be universal here is, okay, we're coming together. We're bringing our baggages, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You're bringing your whole good and the bad and the ugly. We're bringing it together. We're going to walk through whatever we have to walk through, share whatever we have to share, bury whatever we have to bury, keep going and keep building on whatever we have. Now, when we are now in that relationship, there are different roles that we, we, we play. The man is supposed to go to, I mean, that's the case in most places. You, men go to work, women stay home. Even if they want to work more, situations can prevent them. So you can't say that this woman that suffered with you, that lived in the in 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 face me and face you apartment, uh, and suffered and looked after the kids, you know, got pregnant, uh, looked after the kids, couldn't work, was sick most of the time, have four kids for you while you're working and meeting with other people. Now, something that happened, the relationship goes south, and the woman just walk away with nothing. Come on, that's 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 just not right. This this Akim and the wife, the the plus for her is just that yes, yeah, she's also a, a model or an act, actress or something. So she's she's well to do on her own right. What if she's got nothing? What if all she had was what she's been able to build while in that relationship? build in terms of what she could do or work with in between having babies and and, and uh, keeping the home and looking after the home so that this guy can concentrate on his, his career, which in most cases, over 60% of, of cases, that's what most women do. So when you're now putting women into that position of, Whatever you've been able to work with and bring it to that relationship is what you keep, and that's all you can walk away with. It's it's just, to me, it's it's not just fair, it's not just right. Over 60% of women are in that situation whereby they they can't, even if they want to, they can't. This the the situation in a home, you know taking care of the home, taking care of the kids, taking care, making sure the husband comes home to clean house, uh, comes home to, for, for, you know, to eat freshly cooked meal and stuff like that. And then you expect, I mean, even here, superannuation is not the same. You, 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 we've heard it again and again. Um, women's, you know, in, in why, why men, you know, they, they acquired 400, 500, thousand dollars worth of, of their super women can't because they have annual leave they have not no annual leave maternity leave in between all these things and it just doesn't work that way it's and it's not universal i was saying something just yesterday about a woman who has her own house she had her own house the man also had his own house before they got together when they got together, this guy did everything to want to make this woman sell a property. Everything possible, but she refused. I brought this property into my into this relationship. I'm keeping it. If we're gonna set a, start a business and we want to borrow money, let's use yours, or we just find another way around it. I'm not letting go of my own property. She refused. 
that relationship eventually went south because she, the husband thought, yeah, you're not being uh, submissive enough. And he, he left. So in that situation, do you, do you think she was right? Do you think, because okay, if you want to have the argument that is right for a woman, I'm just playing a devil advocate here because we need to have a balanced discussion. Definitely. So if you, if you think it's right for the woman to keep her own property, coming into that marriage, she wants to keep whatever she has been able to acquire on her own. She wants to keep that to herself and then whatever they are able to achieve together as a couple. Do you think that is right? So if you think that is right, so is In it this now situation, right? they both have their own houses. He wants her to get rid of hers. So he, he, wants wants, to, he, he wants, wants to, her to get rid, to sell her own house. Yeah, I get that. So what happens to his? That they will live in his own house. Okay. okay. All right. So she was like, okay, the, 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 the best thing for us to do, we sell both houses, we buy one, we use our money, and we, we, we this new house that we're going to build is going to be in a joint name. Yeah, he refused. Okay. He refused. Okay. So he has, you know, he has a plan. He has right? a plan. He has a plan. So if if he was genuine, he really loves if, this woman and he wanted to build a home and build their wealth with her, they work together. Okay, we have two houses. Let's do it this way. Let's work out this way. Let's do this way. But it was like my way or no way. And it doesn't work in a relationship. In, in that, um, so uh, thank you for you know for that clarification. Um, you know, again, you know, we just try to have a very balanced you know discussion because it is a very uh, very complex situation that we see, you know, from time to time in, in mm. this situation. I'm sure we, we we are all familiar with the concept of gold diggers that people talk about. As you said, if that's the example you gave about that man that he had his plan before getting into this marriage over and over again, we've had that case, we've had you know cases like that as well, in both ways, where people marry celebrities, women actually you know get married to celebrities. You know, the celebrity could be almost 40 years older than her. And and you know, we we we, we we've had a few. Uh, celebrities as well, women that have married to very, very younger, you know, men. That you know, you can see that within a year or two, the old thing is, you know, the old marriage is over, and this person is suing the other person, asking for millions of dollars in child care and and support and all that. So, mm. between you know, across other men or women, do we, do, do we think that is it? a fact of life that people go into marriages with pre-planned ideas in most cases just to benefit themselves and can it be argued that even in this case with akim and that lady she's a model but i don't think they've been together for so long they've only had two kids. i think they yes yes i think they got together i think in 2020 or something like that so, so it's not too long so do, do you think do you think that, that do you think there's any strength in the argument for you know do you think there's any strength whatsoever in the argument that if you just got married to a guy you are older woman the lady is actually older than a king and within three years of coming together everything is over and then you go into court, you're already asking for a 50-50. Could you think there's a, there's a plan on that part before you even get into that marriage? A plan on that part. And also, the man must have picked it up even when they were dating. Things like this just doesn't happen. So for him to have decided that, mm, I need to be wise here, oh, this woman, mm, she's wise, so she's... I mean, there are things she would have said there are things she would have done. There are behaviors he would have seen for him to have decided that now. I'm not going to, in case this happens, I'm going to be wise. Okay? And if you already thinking like that, why even go into such relationship in the first place? That's my, that's my question. Why bring children into such a relationship? It's like you know that this woman is not 
forever kind of woman for you. Why, why do that? Why live your life like that? It's like living your life on edge of what if this may likely happen. Why live your life like that? I, I read of another man. He's an uh, American basketballer who wanted to get married to this young lady. And there was prenup drawn. And six months before, she, she, he said, he claimed that he sat her down and said, I'm sorry, I've got to do this because I was burnt before by my previous marriage. I don't want to be burnt again. This is my this was my experience, and I don't want to relieve that. So now we're gonna we're gonna have a prenup. Are you okay with that? She said, All right. She agreed. The prenup was drawn. Lawyer brought the prenup. She refused to sign. She kept changing, you know bringing one thing or the other, just digressing from the point of prenup. And he said to her, if you don't sign the prenup, I'm not getting married to you. She thought it was a joke. She got to the wedding um, where they were getting married. He didn't show up because she refused to sign the prenup. She refused so, to sign the prenup. Um, now, a lady, if you go, I mean, for me, to me, to start with, having a prenup, it's like, yeah, something may likely go wrong down the line. I mean, if it goes wrong, this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to lose. I'm, I'm not going to be played. I'm not going to be stupid. So if you are marrying someone that you already have doubt about, that you already fully you have a sense or there's something within you warning you that this is not right for you why go into it in the first place that's my question whomever you cannot share the person you'll be sharing your body with but you cannot share every single thing with then there's a problem there's a problem the fact that there is a prenup is is saying there's a there's a you don't trust me, you don't love me enough. There's that thing there, and it's like a, a dark cloud. The marriage may be yummy, yummy, yummy now, but because that cloud is there, you don't trust me, you don't love me enough, you mm -hmm. think I'm a gold digger. Yes, there are real gold diggers, but you know, you know. Even no matter how much they pretend, no matter how much they show that they care, you will pick it up. Because you are picking it up, that's why you are saying, let's do prenup. There will be things that you, something is telling you. You are picking something up. You are, it's like a frequency. They are releasing it. It's like, uh, yeah, I can't be trusted. I can't be trusted. You know how much they are earning, and you see them carrying Gucci bag today. They are carrying um, uh, Valentino bag tomorrow. <laughs> they are, and you expect that when they come home, th this is the job that they are doing. You know how much they are earning tops. And then you expect this person to come home to, to your home and be the 100% loyal, loyal wife. Even if they pretend for a year or two or three, they will eventually show their true color. There's always something. Your friends warning you. Your family mentioning something. Even their own friends saying something. And you're not listening because you are being driven by other things. It's just that as soon as there's a print up there, there is that. It's, 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 it's tainting that relationship already. You know, it's like when you have pure water in a glass of water, glass uh, in a glass, and you put just a drop of coke in it, it won't be it won't be clear water anymore. It's still water, but it's not going to be clear. So that relationship, it's not it's not foolproof. It's not 
really this this that thing there. Well, you know that is that is common. Like that is common when when people like if you marry someone of the woman of your youth or a man of your youth, and you went through all the azos and ozos and do everything together to to make it in life uh from general observation uh, and I'm, i you know stand to be corrected it's it you you very easy with money and that is just maybe i'm let me even very very frank you know like let me talk straight let me use myself as an example i've been with you since we're year one in the university we'll be friends and everything and so the way I look at it is that this person is actually, he's not with me because of money. So that is very clear and defined to me. We're not together because, because probably I had no, I not even probably had nothing. I was just, probably I'll go to a hostel and steal a food or do some things with my comrades, go to a hostel. Sometimes we say, look, I don't ask you to spend all your money within two weeks. <laughs> yeah, Jebu can be very straight and say, look, uh, it's not my problem that you and your friends have spent all your money in the cafeteria, you know, and second week into the month you broke, you can't be coming here to my hostel to eat every night to look after yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we were, we were just as cool as that. Like we we're all growing up and just having dreams about life. So from that perspective and from my personal that experience, it's just money has never been an issue with us because we can look at times that we had nothing. So every the attitude we show towards money is the attitude of gratitude. That wow, we can even get to this stage in our life and we can have money, we can do a lot of things. But I'm also conscious that there are people that they didn't have that kind of story. There are men that probably left Nigeria in their 20s and they've gone everywhere, spent 20 years everywhere, and they are 40 years old. And then suddenly everyone is telling them they need to get married. And then a bit of matchmaking or whatever, and they want to bring someone back to join them in America or to join them in Australia, or whatever. There's that element of self preservation. Whether we want to admit it or not, there's always that sense of self preservation. Uh, in, in that kind of situation, whereby people have spent almost 20 years in the cold, in Canada, winter, everywhere, and they've achieved some things. And they want to settle with this person, uh, no as passions whatsoever on that person, but there's a part of them that's saying that probably this person is not going to be with me anyway. You see, this person is this person marrying for love. So that wasn't something you had to contend with, with your doctor man. It wasn't when you were getting together with Dr. Mike, it wasn't, is Vicky, you know, staying with me because of love or Vicky is being with me because I'm now this Buga rich man. You know, I, my, as far mm -hmm. as I can know about relationship, he was just a young doctor trying to establish himself when you've been together. So whatever you've been able to achieve today is because money wasn't the main attraction from day one. And you can treat each other with respect as you get older and God has provided money and everything. But if doctor had done his own thing on his own and he's now in his 40s and people in his village are telling him you need to get married and go and bring another, I would think and there will be does, something, does, there'll, uh, there'll be something does, yeah. around just trying to be smart, I guess. Yeah. So does he have to now go to the village or go back to Nigeria to go and find somebody? Even if in, if that's the case, there are ways around things like that. I is part of what I do, and I'm I'm sure you've noticed this with me. I connect people by looking at this person and that person. They're both wherever they are in the con, in the world. I'm like, okay, I'll connect them, get them to talk, and find themselves if it's gonna work. Because I know this person and I know that person and I know what they fancy, what, what, you know, and I'm able to do that, you know, and I'm able to do that because um, I, I want this, I want both of them to be happy. So it's not one, it's not two, it's not three. I think counting till today, I think about seven couples that, to God be the glory, not me, 
that I've been able to connect them and they are still together after many, many years. Um, that happened because for me, a 40 year old man chasing a 19 or 20, a the, the child that doesn't even know what she wants for herself or, you know, who knows her? Who is able to, we're talking about, about blessing, uh, blessing CEO before. The government says, okay, if we are going to release you, you need this person, you need this person. Those are the people that will stand for you. So who is introducing this person to you? Can, they, can this person vouch that this woman, if I should marry her, she's not coming in because she wants to use me, dump me, take my money, kill me and take my money because it happens, you you know? Yeah. But if you know, you look at the person who is who is recommending the girl herself. And it's over my dash or only tare la kongo. The way his life or her life is, what he says, how he says it, and think there are so many things that you need to look out for because you have to protect your own interest, also. Yes, so. In cases like that, when you now start talking about, before you even get to the point that you're talking about uh, prenup and, and whatever else, you need to first of all be sure, is this, this going to be an everlasting thing? Who is this person? Who knows her? Who can vouch for her? Yeah. You just don't pick somebody off the street and think that that is it. And I guess, and I guess the, the key thing is that when you already establish a man exactly. or a woman, when you already establish, so so that we have a bit of, I know, so that I, I make this in a bit clearer. When you already establish as a man or a woman, there's all there will be this question mark: Is this person coming for real? Exactly. Is she coming for love, or is she coming uh, for money? Or uh, if a, a woman is well established, the same yes. thing: a woman is he actually coming, you know, for love? Or is it just coming for my property or my money? money? Exactly. Yeah. I'll quickly share one thing. This Akim, this case that we're dealing with today, brought out some horrible, I mean, some stuff. All right. A young woman in Canada got connected with this late, this guy who has no job in Nigeria. A graduate, but no job, no nothing. But when uh, this case came out last week, this guy was all over his page, hailing him. Wow, <laughs> women, they are bad. They are this. The person that connected them was on his page thinking, oh my goodness, what have I done? If this girl should marry this man, they are, this girl in Canada had already done everything, his paper and everything, you know, to bring him over. But now imagine this girl, she's already established in Canada. She had a job. She had a house. She had everything. Now he's going there with nothing. So when he gets there, and this is the guy, Aileen, this man, saying you've done a good job. Yeah, Women, they are, they are bad. They want to take everything. This is a guy that had nothing. That's how, that's how the relationship ended. Because people had to go and tell the girl, eh? What are you getting yourself into? See, all the snapshots of everything he posted was sent to her. That was how he, she broke it up. The man had, I mean... Okay, so, 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 so that, that, that's just around a point, that around self-preservation. She exactly. made that decision solely on self-preservation because... Yeah, eh? She doesn't this want to make the same mistake like most people are doing. Like, 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 like people are. So, and, I, and I think at the end of the day, and I think at the end of the day, you know, the, my frank opinion about this is that, you know, people will do what they have to do. You know, exactly. I've shared my own, you know, a little a bit of my story, and and the fact that because you know uh, the person I'm married to today was my you know, was my very close friend from our first year in the university. So we went through life together and whatever we've been able to achieve, we achieved it together along that journey. So exactly. I've never for once had to sit somewhere and be thinking, is she after money or whatever? Mm. Because if she was after money, probably she would have married some people that were well-established. Why I was still a, 
a, a, okay. you know, a, a, an hungry and angry activist when we were at university. <laughs> she could have looked for, well, this one is still struggling. I better go and look for you. Probably a guy yeah. that already graduated, had a job, and move on with her life. So, but so about self preservation, let's now come back but, to but our. Before, be, sorry, before you go on, but the, the thing about the story that I just shared is that yep. some women, because of the fact that people are breathing down their neck, that they should get married, uh, they are feeling ashamed, they will keep managing that kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. A man who had already done or, or showed his hand that this is who I am, you is is there, it's all over the place. He made it clear, right? And why would you why would you still go ahead and marry such a person? By doing that, you know that this is not gonna last, the relationship isn't gonna last. But you put yourself in that position. This man had already proved himself that this is who I am. And you can't change him. So eventually, he's still going to show the true color. So some women will still go ahead and marry such a man. And that's what creates such problems down the line. Sorry, I just Thank have you. to that in. Thank you, Dr. Vicky. So let's now look at the cultural aspect of it because even in terms of property, getting 50-50, what is even obtainable in Nigeria? You know, we, I'm not intending for us to look at it from the legal angle because we don't have a lawyer to be able to talk, talk us through the nitty gritty in terms of the legal implications in Nigeria. But from what we know in Nigeria, just in general, what we know, is this even a topic in Nigeria? Is, what are women getting out of you know, divorce or breakups in Nigeria? As far as I can recall, I, I think the, the culture and, you know, yeah, is very supportive of you know that patriarchal kind of society where mm. men, men take uh, because they take and do whatever they really you know want to do. Mm. What what is obtainable you know for women in terms of separation divorce? Do they even walk away with something? Even those that are married to multi millionaires or billionaires, you know, do you think you know there's anything for women in Nigeria in this situation? In it that depends on the part of the country we're talking about. I, no, I, I want more to be more specific to Nigeria, Nigerians. That, living that's in Nigeria. what I'm talking about. You know, Nigeria is not just Nigeria now. We're <laughs> okay, talking okay. about the east, oh, the okay, west, okay. and the north. Okay. So you know, when we're talking about the the east, from what I've heard, from what I've seen. They want it all. The family wants the woman out. If it's divorce, go. And she's got nothing. If the man dies, she's got nothing. So there's, in, in the West, in the past, yes. But now there are lawyers that are fighting for women um, that are, you know, helping them out to at least still have access to their children, have access to some of the properties. So it, the, the landscape is changing in the West. I'm not sure about the East. I've heard of, um, you know, couples that separated and um, a lawyer was involved, lawyer for this, lawyer for that. You know, like we do here, they will get them to go for 12 months um, counseling and then, if it's not working, okay, go your way. But what do you have? We, we give you this, we give you this, they separate. So they, they. I mean, that's in the West. The East, it had always been like the man has it all. It's 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 not negotiable. So I'm, I'm yeah. not sure. So things are changing in the West. That's I know for sure. Yeah, I think in terms of the East, I would think that it, like – like every like most part of things that we do, there's always that uh, interrelationship between culture, religion, and in some mm -hmm. cases, with the secular world, the law. Yeah. And, and as far as I remember, I think that was a core challenge in the East. You know, the you know specifically around women and their right to family inheritance. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember, you know, that was uh, a well-celebrated case where that actually went before the court. 
and then the court rule in favor that women can actually, that's you know, specifically in, in the Eastern part, that women can now get share of their fathers of their parents' mm -hmm. estates. So mm -hmm. if you want to argue from that, from that perspective, I will see that as leading to a bit of cultural change. If the court of law had ruled that women can now have access to inheritance, by, by extension, we can deduce, we can begin to, I guess, hope that there will be cultural change along those lines in a way that women should be able to benefit something from, you know, uh, in the case of a breakup in marriage or divorce, mm -hmm. so that the kids will not suffer. Because at the end of the day, like we discussed there, it, you know, it would, the, the the kids are going to be the one that will suffer. The man yeah. probably remarry. There's another mm -hmm. woman in the house. The woman, the new woman, wants to focus all her attention again so about self-preservation, mm -hmm. preserving our own interests and the mm -hmm. interests of our kids. And mm -hmm. in most cases, our kids are very young. Probably there's about 10, 15 years difference between her and the husband. The, mm. the husband has got even maybe some kids that are already in university. She's just having two, three-year-old kids. And this man is not getting, it's not getting younger. She's looking 10, 15 years ahead. What is going exactly. to happen to her own kids? And mm. she's trying everything to preserve her own interest and to preserve the interests of our oh, kids. Exactly. And you know, that's just the, the cultural out aspect of it. So uh looking at the time, so how do we really and do this because we know marriage, you can't, as you said, you can't go into marriage and from day one, you already, there's no trust. If, if you can't trust me with your money or you can't trust me with your property, then- Why am I, why, 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 why am I trusting you with my body then? Yeah. So all these things, they, they need, they, it's just a matter of looking ahead, okay? If it's not gonna work, if you have that inkling, don't even go into it to start with. Mm. Don't even try it because marriage is not just a joke. When you look around, it's like every, they've turned marriage into a joke, which shouldn't be, right? Because at the end of the day, it's the kids that they are bringing into these marriages that are suffering. In as much as I don't want to, okay, I'm not going to go there because there was a tragedy that happened due to marriage breakup and stuff like that. It was the kids, kids in that marriage that actually suffer for it. One of the kids actually committed suicide. That was how bad. Okay. And I've seen cases upon cases, which was what led me to write the book, When Parents Separate, Easing okay. the Trauma for Children. That was what led me to write that book at that time, because it's the kids that do suffer. Those kids didn't ask for you to bring them into this world. You found yourself, you came together, whether through lust or whatever it is you want to call it. And then the kids came into the play. But you couldn't see past your own ego. You couldn't see past whatever else that may be playing for you to, to, to try and make sure things, to, to work things out with your partner come on so getting into it you've got to be sure you know when when all things are said and done you need to have a good feeling about who you are spending the rest of your life with you need to for you to let go and be free and be 100 percent with that person with your body with your money with your future with everything that relates to you, then there shouldn't be any cloud, any cloud in there at all. Thank you so much, there, Dr. Vicky. I think we still have to look for time. Like, I would just try to take us back to some of the points we raised two weeks ago on this issue of marriage, the foundation. You know, we spoke about the foundation. You made an example of building a house and they need to have a very, very solid foundation. So we still have to go to that tonight. It has to be on a good foundation. I don't mm -hmm. think whatever we're reading now, I don't think there's deep intimacy between this lady and Akin. It doesn't really add up to me. If there's 
any deeper kind of relationship, there's no way you won't figure it out something is not right. Do they even have any, any joint accounts together? Because exactly. if, they, if they do, if you know your man is any millions of dollars or whatever. And there's nothing. Right? There's nothing there. <laughs> so the red flags are there. So to me. And you, you look at the way the mom dresses. You look at the way the wife dresses. Yes. A, yes. a man that really admires his mom, goes everywhere with his mom and stuff. And, you know, very modest and everything. And then the wife showing boobs and showing tummy, showing everywhere. It's, not, it's just not gelling for me. It's it's and it's like he knew from the beginning that this is this is not forever and ever kind of relationship. All right. He knew and he just played the woman. I think because the seller, like you know, like you know, the, the you know, as you know, the seller board, uh, you know, a, a soccer superstar plays for one of the best French team PSG. Want to be seen with a super beautiful, beautiful woman. Model. So it's, it's, it's a package, just like from the you know days of uh, David Beckham, you know, and um, and the popular spice Victoria. You know, girl. Um, Victoria. In Victoria, you can see the you know the power couple and what they've been able to do together with that celebrity status, you know, multi million dollars, you know, endorsement here and there. I think there's the business side of it, which, you know, we, even if Akim is not saying that, we are not, if he, if he's this modest Muslim that he pretends to be with his mom covering her head and everything, come on, there are, there are women of that status that she could, he could get in Morocco, where he originally came from, mm -hmm. or even in France, that would still be a modest Muslim person. But I think people get caught in that web. There's a web of the way they want to be seen within their culture and all that. Um, exactly. The reality of oh, the the dollar that the rat raise and the celebrity status. People get caught, caught up in that web. And, you know, I, I just think that it doesn't really add up to me that if you mm. marry someone and there's really that, you know, you really have strong foundation and you're very close, you, you, you can't get away with having all his properties in his mom's name, and you won't, you won't, you won't, you won't, you won't, you won't find out. So it's... every every cent goes into his mom's account. So if they mm -hmm. want to buy food, they want to buy house, they want to buy clothes for the kids. So she's been she's the one who has been paying for all those things. Just doesn't gel. Yeah. Just so gel. with something that I read, like. 80% of his earnings from playing soccer goes into that special arrangement with his mom and he gets 20%, which by every standard is still a lot of money mm. to do whatever he wants to do. But to me, there's still that, you know, the, the, the fundamental question around how close are they, even how in terms of their financial fidelity, how how is that? How do they really do anything in common? If they do mm. things in common, if they do some things in common with money, you don't need to go through separation to know that you know your man that you, you know sleep on the same bed with kids and everything has got eighty because you know that it's not going to happen. I know that it's not going to happen. <laughs> that that won't happen to me here. The way we do things, and mm. I know that the way you do things as well, that is not going to happen. So. So there are many, so I think Nigerians commenting, my opinion is that some people, they come in from the cultural, the way they see things, the way they know things. And there's part of me that now I still even query, how did they even get away with that? Because there's okay. so many unanswered questions in my head. I don't Ooh. even think anyone can, but I think part of why you get away is because Morocco is still, even is in North Africa, is still part of Africa. And there's still a lot of cultural and religious issues. And I yeah. think he bought most of those properties in Morocco. You know, I think and most of the money and investment are tied to his mom's name in Morocco. Mm. That could be one of the reasons why he's able to get away with it. Because I can't imagine a multimillionaire in the West or in Australia, and then the marriage, you know, fails, and then he's saying to the wife during settlement that I don't have money. My money is with my mom. And then the court will just let that person walk free without saying, no, you are a multimillionaire. We know how much you earn. You can't just say all your money is with your mom. 
what happens to your wife and kids. So exactly. the, for me, there, there are so many. Okay. Well, what they would do, I mean, I remember when I used to work in Centrelink, they would go to the source. They would get that money from the source. So it, you can say, oh, my money is with my money, with my mom. But okay, before you even get that money, your em so those that are working, they go to their employ employers and get them to transfer whatever needed to be transferred to the wife first before you get the reminder, the remainder of the money. All right. So in mm -hmm. Western world, that kind of argument just wouldn't hold. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks so much, Dr. Vicky. It's, it's been between us that I think I've achieved what I intended to do tonight. Uh, I don't intend it to be a monologue. I wanted it to for us to look at both sides because mm -hmm. it's a very sensitive issues. Uh, I want to say it from the angle of men, the way the men out there, the way they see it, and also, uh, you know, or your, you know, uh, obviously to look at it from the angles of uh, women and the kids caught up in that in that circle mm -hmm. of poverty and, and all mm -hmm. that. So I will hand over back to you to have your final words um, mm -hmm. and close the show, Dr. Vicky. Oh, that was a great show, uh, Mr. While you're light on. That was really a great one. Not a the topic that we're discussing. I, I'm I'm for good marriages, good relationship, supportive relationships. Um that's that's my thing anytime, any day. It's never rosy rosy 100 percent of the time, but we walk through things. Mm -hmm. Um so um when people are, you know, there's there's this we have to do this we have to do this before i can settle with you then you're already there's doubt there there's there's that feeling that yeah i really don't trust you 100 that you're here because you love me because you want to build this home with me there's there's that thing there so we've managed to to do the job of um, discussing it from both angles, uh, Mr. Olayton. So well done, well done, well done. And to our viewers that joined us this evening, Mr. Um, Evangelist Ambassador Adeni Yekine, Tolu Felicity, Oyerunke, Adekwe Ju, and the others, Raymond Dashaulu from South Africa and a few other ones on, on Facebook that joined us. We want to say thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, please just comment and um, we'll read and um, respond to your comments. We will be back again um, next Friday, same time, same place. You all look after yourself. Remain blessed. Um, we'll see you then, okay? All right. Good okay. night, everyone. Good, good night. Have a good week. Nigeria Bye. we want great Nigeria to Africa Nigeria we want oh, Oh, sure.